Jen comes up a lot because um, I'll say, hey, you know, is there anything here that you guys don't like? And Jen comes up a lot with bartenders. Really? Yeah. It's uh, it's still kind of a thing. They're they're not really used to it or they just they don't know. And then we go through it and we do things like south sides and gimlets and, you know, using fresh lime and and um, and they're like, oh, this is actually really good. And then they start to get it, and then we start using different gins, and they see how how these things differ from one another. Um, if a guest comes in and says, and you say, um, oh, you know, how can I help you? What can I make for you? And their response is anything but gin. Just as someone who loves sharing, my first inclination is like, how do I sneak gin into you? <laughs> like, I, I want you to love this thing. How can you not like this thing? Um, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to lose the trust of the guest. And once you gain it, you can say, I have something that I'd love for you to try. If you don't like it, mm-hmm. um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll comp that, you know, if you have the ability to do that, of course. And uh, you let them try something. Obviously, you make sure that it's not something they're allergic to, you know, right? But if they try something and they like it, even if they don't love it, they will walk away being like, oh, I went to such and such bar and it was the first place I ever liked gin. What's your strategy for accomplishing that? Is it trying to mask the gin in a way where it's more balanced? No. no. It's uh, a lot of the times, it doesn't matter what the spirit is, whether it's gin or vodka or tequila or rum or what have you. Most people who don't like something, unless it's a specific you know, aspect of that, spirit or in the case of gin a botanical like anise that just really you know that just really drives people off a lot of the bad experiences people had were from drinking it out of a plastic bottle (laughs) in high school i mean it's true they just like you just you can't smell tequila for a while because you had a brand that will not be named here that is a mixto tequila and they had way too much of it and they can't they couldn't smell tequila for a decade if not two decades. Yeah. Um, You know, that happens a lot. So it's not about masking it because you can make something really great that makes that spirit shine. It just depends on what the person wants. So if you're like, you know, what do you normally like? Oh, I like mojitos. Boom, I'm making them a South Side. You know, I'm changing it up to lemon. I'm putting fresh mint. I'm putting gin. To them, it's going to look like it anyway. They're like, oh, this is a little different. I'm not going to choose something that is, you know, 47% 47% is going to punch him in the face, but I will ease the way in. I mean, the goal is not to go from zero to 60. The goal is to like get them to start branching out. And if you change someone's perspective, even a little bit, and they're like, oh, I hate it. You know, at the very minimum, I don't hate gin now. You know, they're like, this opens a whole new world for me. Now I can go to menus where normally I go like gin, skip, gin, skip. I'm like, oh, this is, hey, I had this drink over at this place and Normally, it's the first time I've ever liked gin. It was kind of like a, you know, a gin mojito. You know, if, if the bartender knows, he's be like, oh, it's a South Side. Would you like me to make you a South Side? Yeah, actually, I would like something a little bit different, but along those lines, like something citrusy, you know, it's a good start. But mm-hmm. again, it's the turning moments into memories thing where are they going to remember the name of the bartender? I don't know. Are they going to remember <laughs> what, you know, what they had? Maybe not even, but that they're like, you know what? I went to this place and it was the first place that I ever liked gin. 